Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or SMIC, is China's largest semiconductor manufacturer and the fifth largest in the world. China's State Council on August 4th announced its latest semiconductor policy, which includes a plan for China to reach 70% self-sufficiency in chips by 2025. This is part of China's latest drive to compete in the technology sector, but the plan was dealt a major blow when the Trump administration announced that they are considering blacklisting SMIC on September 5th. Following the news, SMIC's Hong Kong share price plunged 22.9% on September 7th, down 23.6% during the session. CNBC reported that a U.S. Defense Department spokesman said the U.S. is reviewing SMIC's relationship with the Chinese military, and the Defense Department is discussing with several government agencies whether SMIC should be added to the U.S. Department of Commerce's list of sanctioned entities, and the proposal is currently being reviewed by a committee of U.S. government officials. Once SMIC is added to the list, it could face sanctions similar to those imposed on Huawei. Companies will need to undergo a rigorous review before exporting any U.S. technology to SMIC and will only be able to supply to SMIC after receiving an approved license. Why does the U.S. suddenly intend to take action against SMIC? The Wall Street Journal stated that a report by a U.S. defense contractor has alerted the U.S. government to the fact that SMIC is suspected of supporting the buildup of the Chinese Communist Party's military. The report, published last month by a U.S.-based defense contractor, SOS International, said, SMIC has a variety of ties to China's defense sector, including an ongoing relationship with CETC, a state-owned developer of military electronics. The report also cited research papers published by Chinese military researchers showing that they have used SMIC technology to manufacture chips. One of those CCP military academies was blacklisted for exporting by the U.S. Commerce Department in 2015 for allegedly designing supercomputer chips used to simulate nuclear tests. Sources said the SOS report has been shared with multiple agencies in the Trump administration, including the Commerce Department's Bureau of Industry and Security. On September 5th, SMIC issued a clarification announcement, saying, Its products and services are used for both civilian and commercial purposes, and it has never had any business practices involving military applications, and has nothing to do with the Chinese military. This announcement, however, failed to stop the panic selling of stocks. Not only did SMIC's shares plummet on September 7th, but those of companies in its related industry chains, including semiconductor equipment, semiconductor materials, fingerprint recognition, chip companies, and others, also fell. Huawei is SMIC's largest customer, with 18.7% of its revenue coming from Huawei. As a result, shares of Huawei's major affiliates also fell collectively. For Beijing to become a global technology powerhouse, it needs to cut its reliance on foreign semiconductor manufacturing. SMIC is effectively controlled by the Chinese government behind the scenes. As of the end of 2019, SMIC's top three shareholders controlled more than 40% of the company, all of them being Chinese state-owned enterprises. China has long relied on imports for its chips. Market research firm IC Insights noted that China's semiconductor self-manufacturing rate was about 15.7% in 2019, up only slightly from 15.1% in 2014. Tensions between China and the U.S. are currently growing, and U.S. measures to prevent the theft of technology are becoming more strict. So the Chinese government has worked hard to develop its domestic chip industry in an attempt to reduce foreign dependence. It has set a goal of 70% self-sufficiency in chips by 2025. SMIC has enjoyed rapid growth in recent years, thanks to strong government support. But in addition to low self-sufficiency, China's chip manufacturing also suffers from outdated technology. As China's strongest domestic chip maker, SMIC's products are still at the 14 nanometers process level, with 96% of its revenue coming from technologies prior to 28 nanometers. In order to complete chip manufacturing, SMIC needs to purchase materials, equipment, and technical services required for integrated circuit chip foundry and supporting services from other sources. Of SMIC's major 30 suppliers, 10 are U.S. companies, 4 are Taiwanese companies, and 6 are Chinese companies. At this year's World Semiconductor Congress, TSMC, the world's top semiconductor foundry in Taiwan, said its 3 nanometer wafer process will be on the market in 2021 and in mass production in 2022, and the 2 nanometer and 1 nanometer processes will not be a problem at all. 
If SMIC were to be blacklisted, it would mean that SMIC's 7 nanometer process and more advanced chip technologies would be essentially on hold. For example, the 7 nanometer process requires the extreme ultraviolet lithography technology. This is in the hands of ASML, a major Dutch lithography manufacturer, and ASML is looking to the United States for technology. In August, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visited the Netherlands in anticipation of the release of the ASML EUV lithography system, but the request was not met. While Wang addressed the issue of lithography exports, the Dutch Prime Minister and Foreign Minister expressed concern over the Hong Kong version of the national security law and human rights issues in China, including religious freedom. Some Chinese media admitted that the ability to purchase ASML EUVs is an important piece of the puzzle for the successful development of China's semiconductor industry. At present, there is no alternative that can help SMIC completely isolate itself from U.S. technology. That is to say, SMIC can't develop without the U.S. semiconductor-related equipment industry, where it is the absolute leader, and the U.S. technology will be indispensable for SMIC to make faster breakthroughs in advanced technologies for the time to come. The Wall Street Journal reported that SMIC's customers are mainly Chinese enterprises, with nearly 60% of its 3.1 billion USD revenue in 2019 coming from Chinese companies. An industry professional's analysis pointed out that SMIC's ban is not just a problem for ZTE and Huawei, but will impact the chip manufacturing needs of other Chinese semiconductor companies, which could seriously result in a nationwide chip shortage. TSMC and Samsung are leading the way in chip production, but neither company is without U.S. components. The U.S. sanctions decision in May banned any company that uses U.S. components from selling chips to Huawei. On July 16th, TSMC announced that it had complied with the U.S. sanctions and had stopped accepting orders from Huawei since mid-May and will terminate shipments to Huawei in mid-September. While SMIC is still technically far behind TSMC and Samsung, it is Huawei's only hope at the moment. If the U.S. were to cut off technology supplies to SMIC, Huawei would once again be in a desperate situation. And China's ambition to achieve a 70% chip manufacturing rate by 2025 would be even harder to achieve. Possible U.S. export restrictions on SMIC could pierce the CCP's plan to become self-sufficient in key technologies and perhaps protect more companies that follow international rules. Founded in 2004, SMIC is incorporated in the Cayman Islands and headquartered in Shanghai, China. One of the company's most important founders was R.K. Chang, a former TSMC employee. The Chinese media have dubbed him the father of China's semiconductor industry and credited him with making SMIC's miraculous rise to prominence. TSMC sued SMIC for patent infringement and trade secret disclosure. In late 2009, TSMC won the case against SMIC and was awarded damages of 200 million USD and a 10% stake in the company. Then, SMIC's president, Richard Chang, was also forced to step down. TSMC has been facing problems with Chinese companies poaching its engineers. Taiwanese media reported that Chinese companies were offering annual salaries two to two and a half times higher than TSMC's. But TSMC is apparently luckier than the Canadian company Northern Telecom. In the late 1990s, Canadian intelligence agencies alerted Nortel to the presence of Chinese spies at the company, but they did not take the matter seriously. Over a period of about six months in 2004, 1,400 documents were stolen from Nortel's LiveLink servers. Brian Shields, the company's senior systems security advisor, investigated the theft and found that the intrusion into Nortel's internal computer network probably began in the late 1990s, with most of the hacks traced back to Chinese IP addresses and four internet service providers, with most of Nortel's stolen data ending up at the ISPs in Shanghai. In 2005, Huawei won part of British Telecom's massive 21st century network project, while Nortel was ruled out. In 2008, Huawei won major contracts with two major Canadian telephone companies, TELUS and Bell. In January 2009, Nortel filed for bankruptcy protection.